Well, hi, and uh, welcome to our final week of Dear Church. Sigh. I know, it's our last week, but I do hope it's been a fantastic journey for you as much as it has been for us as we've uh, created this content and journeyed with our communities. Uh, this week, we're going to be landing by looking at our final chapter, chapter 16, and looking at uh, Paul, in a sense, summarizing the last uh, 15 chapters that he's been writing. And what I would tend to call this, uh, these few verses, is what I would call the before the bill arrives kind of summary. You see, Paul has been writing in chapter 16. He starts by encouraging the Corinthians to ensure that they are uh, staying generous as a people and sticking to their financial commitments to some of the churches around the area. And, uh, and then he talks about his travel plans for a few more uh, verses. And then he hits what I would call the before the bill arrives uh, summary. What's the before the bill arrives summary? Let me explain. I love to hang out with people. I'm a pastor and, and I love to sit and have a coffee with them and, and talk about matters of life and faith and, and all sorts of things. But after about an hour, we finish and we order or ask for the bill. And, uh, and, and then something interesting happens. We know the bill is arriving. And so both of us try our best, whoever I've been sitting with, to summarize what's been heard. I, I know I do. I start finding myself going, so if you're going to get what I've just been saying for the last hour, then remember this. And I try to summarize it in a sentence or two. Paul's been writing for 15 chapters about the gospel and matters of their church and how they ought to arrange themselves and work together and love God well. And now in verses 13 and 14 of chapter 16, he has a before the bill arrives moment and he tries to summarize what he's trying to say to them. So let's read it together. It's short, so don't blink, otherwise you'll miss it. And uh, it being a great thing to open your Bibles now, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, and uh, I'm going to read it for us this time. Here's what it says. Be watchful. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. You see, in and amongst Paul's final parting words about financial generosity, his travel plans, when he hopes to visit them next, and a few little arrangements around what people should do and how they should arrange themselves, he speaks about these important things. So I want to unpack that short little sentence uh, for the next little bit, and then hopefully that'll start off our discussion time together. So let's look. First he says, be watchful. Be watchful. You see, what I think Paul's trying to say here is he's trying to say that the love of God is simple and the gospel is powerful. But the lives we lead are complex and the world we live in is even more complicated. And he's saying it's really important that we learn to discern how we ought to live in this complex world world that we live in. Unfortunately, there's just no one-size-fits-all uh, dynamic when it comes to working out our faith in the world. And, and he's saying there really is one gospel that is sufficient for all circumstances, but we're going to need some discernment to know how it is that we can please God in this complex world that we live in. How are you doing when it comes to being watchful? Are you a watchful person when it comes to your faith and matters of life? He then carries on and he says, stand firm. One of my favorite things to do when I go to the beach is to stand or swim in the shore break where the waves are crashing onto the sand. And anyone who's done that knows that you need to stand, put your legs wide apart and stand because those waves are going to try to knock you over. And the same is true in life. There are circumstances in life that are going to try to knock your faith down. And Paul has a final before the bill arrives moment where he says, stand firm, you're Faith really matters to God, to me, and to those around you. And he's saying, stand firm. Stand firm. It seems that he's calling us to stand firm in a number of matters. And, and really, that we should stand firm in our faith. And what I think might happen 
when we look back from eternity shoulder uh, to shoulder with Jesus, is that all our standing firm, it might appear that when we thought we were standing firm, we were really standing on the shoulders of Jesus. And it was him who was standing firm. And, and all our trust and our faith that was us standing firm was us clutching on to Christ who was really the firmness underneath us, who was really the one who was holding us when our emotions were up and down and our relationships were up and down and, and it felt like life was a roller coaster. It's Christ who anchored us. Are you standing firm? Next thing Paul says, he says, act like men. This is not Paul saying, uh, you know, it's all about a, a gender based encouragement here. No, no, he's not looking at gender. He's looking at maturity. This is a charge from Paul to avoid abdication and embrace spiritual maturity. That we're called to be growing all the time. Are you growing as a Christ follower? Or are you abdicating growth to the people on your left and your right? He's, he's calling them and saying, move from consumer to contributor. Stop trying to be the sun when you're actually called to be the earth. Stop being the person who expects everything in life to revolve around you when actually you're called by God to revolve around others, to, to love God, revolve your life around God's will and, and to love others and revolve your life around the needs of others. That's the call of a mature person, to love God and serve God and to love others and serve others. No, that really is what I would say is a mature Christ follower. How are you doing at maturing? Has, has this last 16 chapters helped you to see what a mature Christ follower looks like? He then says, be strong. Really, he's carrying on the theme of maturity and saying, it's important that you're growing in spiritual strength. Are you growing in spiritual strength? Uh, sometimes we misunderstand spiritual strength. We look at our culture and determine strength as being an island. I can do it my way. I, I did it without the help of anyone else. I was the strong, independent one. Uh, this is Paul talking about the upside down kingdom of the kingdom of God. It's a different kind of strength. It's, it's the strength of a humble person who acknowledges they need God. A, a humble person who acknowledges they need others. That's the kind of strength Paul is talking about. He's talking about teamwork, acknowledging that we don't have everything in and of ourselves. It's a strength of trust that God will provide many of the things that we could never provide for ourselves. Most of those being the most important things in our life. How are you doing at growing in that kind of strength? And then finally, Paul says, let all that you do be done in love. He really tops it off with the slam dunk when he says, it's really important that you learn to live out of a space of love. And it feels really impossible sometimes. How do we do everything out of a space of love? This is Paul pointing us through this verse back to the source and saying, if you're going to live a life of love, then you're going to need to become a person who is caught up in the love of God and is amazed by the love of God and is plugging himself or herself into the source of love, that being Christ Jesus himself. If you're going to become a more loving, more mature, more strong person who stands firm, well, then you're going to need to become a person who's plugged in to the love of Christ expressed through the cross. How are you going to do that? It's by building a real relationship with him. How's your relationship with God going? Have you got a real relationship with him? Do you have sweet fellowship with God? There's nothing more precious in all the world than sweet, loving fellowship with God your Father in heaven through Jesus Christ. Who do you need more? People or God? Uh, what do you need more? Money or God? Or, or friends or God? Or a career or God? Paul's pointing us back in this final verse to saying, if you want to grow up, if you want to make a meaningful difference in this life, Live a life of love by plugging into the source of love, Jesus Christ himself. That's how you learn to love better. In parting, here's the prayer that's helped me to grow in my understanding of the love of God. It's simply this. Lord, I may know your love in part, but I want to know it better. I know you died for me, but not the full extent of your love and not the full extent of why you died for me. Help me 
to understand what it cost you when you died on the cross for me. I need you to make this more clear to me. That's a prayer worth praying and that's what's going to grow us as more loving people. We're going to move into a time of discussion now. And uh, I would encourage you, before you, you have your discussion, why not open a little word of prayer and then we're going to answer two questions. Why not push pause and pray now? Well, because this is the last week in our 1 Corinthians journey, we're going to do things slightly differently. One, we're only going to have two questions and uh, really going to use this as a more summary style discussion where we're going to look back on the last few weeks of journeying together. Uh, and you'll draw in some of your preaching experiences that you've gathered from the preaching, as well as some of the discussions we've had over the last couple of weeks. So, in a sense, this is a summary of the last few weeks. And uh, really, because Paul has been summarizing his last couple of uh, chapters in these few verses. So, here's the, the first question. Which of these five encouragements that I just spoke about, would you personally say, at, in your own life, has been the most pertinent to you tonight and throughout this journey through 1 Corinthians? Well, because we're going to land with this question and because we're heading towards the end of the year and hopefully for many of us, we're going to get some holiday time and some rest. And uh, it's so important that we understand rest as, as something that is rest from our work, but also rest for the work to come. And uh, I, I would want to ask us a question that hopefully helps us to relate to that dynamic of, of resting well. And here's the question. Think of the year that's gone by. When it comes to living a life of love, what have you grown in that you're celebrating right now? And in 2016, when it comes to living a life of love, what are you hoping you will grow in even more as the year unfolds with the help of Christ? Final thing to say is uh, in pairs, why not pray for each other? Given what you've just shared around the year gone by and your hopes for the year to come and the fact that you're about to rest, why not pray that this time of rest and this time where you're not meeting as small groups would be one that is filled with God's grace, both resting from and preparing for a season where God sent, uh, calls freshly for the year that lies ahead. It's been fantastic journeying with you as small groups across the city. And I do hope you've had as much fun as we have. Uh, this is us signing off on the 1 Corinthians journey. Have a great evening.